Hey, Freeman. <clears throat> Hey, Vani. Good evening. Hey, Freeman. Good morning. Let's wait for a few minutes for others to join us. Yeah, sure. Hey, Junjie. Good morning. Hey, Junji. Good morning. Hey, Patrick. Good morning. Morning. Hi, everyone. Hi, Patrick. Hey, Pritesh. Good afternoon. Hey, hi, Freeman. Good afternoon. Well, good morning, buddy. Yeah, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Hi, everyone. Hi, Shui. Hi, Shivi. Hey, British. Hey. All right, we have six people joined here. He mentioned that he has some device problems, so he may not, he will be joining us a bit late. Shall we get started? I think we already have the agenda topics gathered today. Let me post the agenda items in our chat and uh, see if there's anything missed. Will Million join us? I remember Million mentioned that he's interested in joining us to talk about the potential flag for enab enabling timestamping signature verification. So I'm not sure if, if Million will be able to join us Pratesh and uh, Vani, do you know what's I, availability? He's online, I just paid him, let's see. Okay. Maybe I'm I can not, share my screen. I'll go ahead, I'm please. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to join today, but uh, let's let's see once uh, Pratesh brings in. Okay. How about we starting this meeting first? And uh, we have the recording. Okay. Pritesh mentioned that Million will be joining. Wonderful. Let me share my screen and uh, we will go through this agenda and let's see if anything missed. Hey, Milan. All right, I'm sharing my screen. And now we have two topics gathered today. One is for the timestamping verification behavior. Uh, Pratesh created a poll last week, and now I think we received votes from maintainers. So we, we will need to revisit the vote result and discuss the potential switch for those two options. 
And another pro a pro a pro proposal is from E, which is to discuss the scope of the notation v1.1.1 patch release. Is there anything missed or you want to add to today's agenda items? If not, yes, I think we... nice to see everyone. I'm... I had mic troubles earlier. Hi, Milan. Welcome back. He mentioned he has some device problems and uh, he's still fixing that. So he will be joining us a few minutes late. So we just go over the meeting agenda items and see if anything missed. If you see anything you wanna put in the agenda, feel free to add to this list. If not, I think we will go through from the first one. Yeah, here's the call created by Pratesh. And let's see the status of those votes in this meeting. It seems we got <clears throat> four votes for option one. And five votes for option two. I just count the votes in total. So it seems the direction goes to option two. Any thoughts for the vote? Pritesh? Body? No, I didn't get that. Any comments on the votes? <clears throat> from my side. Yeah, if no more comments i think um at the end of the day i think uh, now we may need to go with option two and determine the potential uh, default behavior with the flag name as i mentioned in this issue um uh, should we post that there's a there's a um, default flag name that we need to determine. And now we just use always verify timestamping on this flag name as a sample. But if we all agree that option two is the direction that we need to follow, I think next we can determine the potential uh, flag name in this meeting. Can you can I give some context on where this flag would be available for users? Is it past part of the trust policy? Um, this has been discussed last meeting. I assume this is a part of the trust policy. So wait, do you and do you have any further comments for this comment? Because it is it was proposed by you. I just make a short note from our last meeting. Yeah, we should uh, give the uh, customers have options to uh, uh, turn on or turn off it. Um, although the default uh, value should be option two, uh, but uh, the user should be able to opt to, to option one. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I just want it to be, I think the feedback is, for it to be in line with the existing structure that we have. Um, 
like would it be available as an override? Uh, let's pull up the trust policy spec. I think that'll that'll give an idea of what I'm talking about. I just showed an example in the chat. If that makes sense. Yeah, if you scroll further down where we have the policy examples, I think we have an example with the override in there. So, Pratash, your proposal is to having a dedicated parameter, timestamp revocation with maybe two potential values like skip or strict, something like that. Is yeah. that your proposal? Yeah. I mean, we can uh, we can define the name of the keys later on, but yes. Yeah, I just want to, like, I'm not weighing in on the options. I think the feedback that I want to give is the reason we created the whole signature verification level. And if you scroll down the table, right, that we have, um, the table with the different levels and what it means. Fenman, can you, could you scroll down to that section? Uh, I think it is, that, it's- that table, the verification yeah, the, level? Yeah. Scroll down. It's further right. down. Yeah, right there. All right, so, so the timestamping is part of authentic timestamp. And or let me take a step back. The re reason we created this is you can't expect every user of notation to understand the nitty gritties of what a signature validation actually involves and the different properties involved that like, what is integrity, what is authenticity, what is revocation check. Timestamping is like another thing that definitely important from a security perspective, but for end users to be aware, yes, a security user or would be aware of it, but a developer wouldn't be aware. So you want to be careful for how you name it and you how you expose it, uh, which is why we have like very simplified levels, right? Strict permissive audit skip, and that decides how everything else is configured. So if we want to break down, if we feel the authentic timestamp isn't capturing the variations required for the TSA timestamp verification, I'm open to adding a new column in there, which if there are variations we can capture, like for example, you can see strict means it's enforced. What that would, then you have to think about what does enforced mean for the, if we are saying option two, then timestamp verification does occur. And then the revocation check also occurs. If you see permissive, then it is logged, which means it is checked, but warned. There is no skip options here. So you wanna take what you think about those two steps, the timestamp verification and the revocation check. If these, the authentic timestamp and the revocation check, do they match up with that? If that behavior is okay, uh, there's also a question of like, does revocation check cover both the revocation checks, the primary signature and the timestamp or the authentic timestamp covers the timestamp verification plus revocation checks. I'm, I'm just calling out 
some of the things that need to be thought of. And then I'm in favor of having these overrides, which explicitly allows you to skip. If we can simplify it to one switch instead of two, that would be nice. Uh, I think that's just, again, giving like high level feedback on like usability and how this needs to be available to, how this needs to be exposed to end users. Does yeah, that make I sense? Mean, Any questions there? Uh, meaning, uh, so you mentioned that we should have some uh, validations parameters for the uh, timestamp. Uh, we actually have a version of design uh, of it uh, by introducing something called uh, timestamp verification. Uh, I'm not sure if Patrick you still have that uh, proposal in your hand or not. I haven't looked at it. Uh, it's not in that PR anymore. Um, but maybe we can find the history uh, of the commit in the PR. Yeah, wait for seconds trying to find that commit to bring more context. Patrick, uh, let me know whether commit you want to point out. Patrick, um, if you find something, you can also share it directly. You can also share your screen by all or point me the right me some time. Uh, I need to find it. Okay. Uh, give me a moment, please. Uh, so basically in the previous uh, design proposal, uh, we introduced a uh, field called uh, time, uh, time verification. And we do have levels for it. And uh, uh, later, uh, pretty think, okay, we should not have a level for it. We should have just like have a uh, a boolean uh, uh, flag saying we enable it or not. And and later, uh, we have the option one, option two to make it default to two or false. So uh, that's okay. The, it's really nice. Okay, I I would say is like if if there was a proposal for a top level like the way we have signature verification to have a top level timestamp verification. I think that goes, I think that would be, uh, that's probably not the direction I would take. It would be nice to have it under the signature, sing, the existing one that we have, right? Signature verification, have the timestamp verification as one of the aspects in there. Yeah. So, uh, we also think about that, but that means we need to have more options other than enforce, log, escaped, uh, or we need to uh, introduce other columns, but they are not well, well structured. No, it wouldn't be new. Yeah, you're right. It wouldn't be new, new levels. You still have those four levels, but you have new columns in there, right? And what what strict means for timestamp verification? What permissive means for uh, the timestamp verification and the revocation check? I think what, yeah. what so, Pritesh has right now in the suggestion, I think that that is pretty close to, and based on the voting that we are doing, right? What it means is strict will, strict will perform the timestamp verification. It will enforce it and it will enforce the timestamp revocation or permissive, both of them are logged. They are not enforced, uh, similar to the existing authentic timestamp and revocation. And there is no level default or any of these levels doesn't by default skip it. If you're skipping, if you're doing skip level, it skips everything. So the two override switches, having override switches makes sense. We may have rules about what those override switches support and around naming of it. The other consideration was, does it make sense to have it as a single one or not, as a single switch or not, which is mainly so that we talk about scenarios where you want 
verification to be done, but revocation to be skipped. Do you want that separation or not? I have a question regarding the override, the parameter, uh -huh. parameter name. So that the override mean the timestamp signature verification will override the default primary signature verification. We will use the timestamp verification with its um, value as the as the major uh, for major behavior of the signature verification. Can anyone clarify yeah, I... the all right mean? So the override means whatever value is implied by the default, the signature level, right? So in this case, it is strict. So strict means everything is enforced. So the default behavior with strict is timestamp verification is enforced and timestamp revocation is enforced. And you're saying, no, I don't want to enforce those. I want to skip those. I think it... I mean, looking at this, I, I feel it would be better to expand this table and call out the timestamp verification and revocation check explicitly as two different additional columns. Then there is no confusion about like, is it covered under revocation, existing revocation, or is it covered under existing uh, authentic timestamp? Hey, Yi, you have your hands up. Uh, yes. Um, I'm. I'm just thinking it, it's a bit different. Um, uh, at least uh, for for the for the for that, um, uh, pre dash credit. Uh, I think, uh, um, it is uh, about that whether, um, if a science advocate is not e expelled and the user configured the timestamping, whether we should uh, always check the timestamping uh, signature. It, it, um, but actually, the uh, it, um, I think this falls into that the timestamping will always be checked. It is just that uh, if a science certificate is not expelled, should we also check the timestamp? So, so it's, uh, it, it's a bit different. So that was the voting topic, right? Should timestamp signature be verified when signature when signing certificate is unexpired? Uh, yes, that's right. That's the voting for, and uh, we should have a vote option for that. I think the, I mean, the vote was for default behavior, but we still want to add the behavior where customer can go and. Modify default behavior. And that's what feminist. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Maybe, uh, maybe I'm misunderstanding. I, I thought based on the vote, we are saying the default behavior is, and again, the default behavior is in the context of, I think it's simple when you talk about in the context of strict verification. When we are doing strict verification, what happens with timestamp signature? And based on the vote, it is irrespective of the uh, signing certificate expiry, the timestamp signature is always verified, which means it is always enforced. Revocation check is always enforced. Does, does that sound correct? Uh, and then we are talking about how to override it. No, no, no. There is two it's things. Difference. Yeah. One is you always verify the timestamp signature. And the second one is you only verify the timestamp signature if signing certificate has expired. Does it make sense? Um, yeah. Um, and that the second one becomes difficult to plot with trust policy because it actually it's not the verification level or anything like that. It's just behavior which we are trying to change. Okay. Yeah. It's, yeah. Time yeah. is enabled, but only check it if signing is expired. 
Got it. Okay, I I get what you're saying. Which is difficult to model a trust policy because I want it, but not right now. Only after certificate expired. Okay. Okay. I okay. I get what you're saying. You're saying all right. Uh, in the in the trust policy, we are able to say option two by saying like strict or whatever, and that enforces it. But we want a way to say only only enforce it when the signing certificate has not expired. Yes. Okay. Okay. Then the then the options that you suggested here, right? That doesn't that doesn't track with that. Like the, those overrides need to be renamed. Yeah, or we can have, I mean, yeah, it doesn't fit in there. You can always add a always verify timestamp, but I mean, yeah, it doesn't fit in here. Even if it doesn't fit in the table, I would prefer capturing these as overrides instead of having new top level fields. I agree. Uh... So we can expand this table just to document clearly how timestamp signatures are verified under different levels. And then I, okay, the ask is we need to have some way for users to change that behavior, specifically related to what happens when signing certificates are unexpired. Uh, but the problem here is that uh, it's a sub-validation of the uh, validation uh, authentic timestamp. So uh, uh, structurally, uh, it's not good to add a new column, uh, but, but to add a sub-column of it. I'm good with that. Even if we like, I, I think it needs to be documented in some fashion clearly. If we say authentic timestamp includes TSA signatures in some fashion, that suffices. For revocation check, if you want to bunch those two signing certificate revocation check plus TSA, if that is documented in some way, that works. Like for revocation, I'm fine there because there's a way to do it, but the problem with Enabling time stamping check only in certain situation, it has to be a Boolean flag, and that's where it breaks our current policy model. Either we include Boolean flag now. Yeah, or... I agree with British. So uh, we need a Boolean flag instead of uh, different levels because uh, there's no log for this field. I agree with that. How can we present those two Boolean values, like true or false, if you want to align with the table, the verification level table? I think the, the I think now it it becomes more of a naming problem now. I'm I'm okay with the. You can you can you can do it a couple of ways. You can have a boolean flag. Then you have to think about how you want to name that, or you can make the value more descriptive. You can have a, uh, for example, the key can be instead of always verify. You can have something like timestamp verification, and the value it can be a multi-value, a descriptive value where you can say verify always or verify on expired signing certificate, something like that. You can be more descriptive that way. I'm giving naming options. I'm, I'm agreeing uh, in principle on how it needs to, where it needs to surface. I think it's not about the naming. How about this? So currently you are proposing that we put the field under the override uh, uh, field. How about we just put the, that pulling flag under the uh, signature verification field? 
So it's just a side of the uh, very level and override. So it can be a Boolean flag. And later we can decide uh, what's the proper name for it. Um. I don't think I have a strict opinion either way. We are like we are assuming that the override just overrides the enforce logs kept. I I don't think there's like a correct answer here. We can have it either ways. I think that will also do. I'm I'm open to like this is good that we are proposing different different ways to represent it. I think second option is better than the first one because then actually the actually verification level over it's just that we get the behavior of the system, how we are doing signature verification. Okay. Again, it, it can be interpreted both ways. I uh, the second option does look simpler. So we can you clarify a bit more on the second option? If we have level strict strict and also said the always verify timestamp to true. Yeah what so... does it okay go ahead yeah so um so that is it's not on the uh, this table but in the entire signature verification um it's a uh just an option uh, so we can have a boolean true or false, uh, uh, and and the, the um it's just true or false. We don't need to bother with the levels like uh enforce, skip, and logs. Um, but uh, yes, as pretty uh mentioned, uh, we need to refine the uh, field name and uh, to be more descriptive and uh. uh and make sure that the default value set to false means option two. I see. So the second option, the verify timestamp signature, the always verify timestamp should be another section in in this part. It will not expand the existing table. No, it will not expand the existing uh, table. Uh, you can find uh, examples in the chat window of the Zoom. Okay, I saw that. Um, I yeah, see a note to... there on the... Sorry, if we... Okay, just want to add that if, if we are not expanding the current table, we need to at least in the... I see in the authentic timestamp... Uh, that was before we implemented, I think. So that at least those sections need to be updated that this includes TSA. That that would be change. That would be the change without updating the table itself. Do you agree to that? Um, uh, Amy, so you mean that? Uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, I I try to understand what what's the uh, um, uh, meaning. Just talk about it's uh, under the authentic uh, uh time. Um, we need to uh add uh, some description about the um uh, time stamping, right? Uh, 
Yeah, and same for the revocation check. That this includes revocation check for the timestamp. Okay. Timestamp so searches. For, yeah, so for those two columns, uh, we needed to add uh, information for uh, uh, timestamping related check. Yeah. Okay. Um, and actually, I, I like uh, Pritesh's uh, proposal for the uh, the the name is more descriptive. But as Shui mentioned, we, we should consider uh, the default value, right? So, um, so default value, uh, Shui, uh, do you expect it is uh, false or true? So that that will, um. That will need to maybe um change the name a, a bit. Uh, I think the purchase proposal is fine. Uh, so by default, the verify uh, timestamp uh on third uh expiry is false, right? So uh that's actually the uh, uh option two. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah. wait a second. Uh, yeah. So 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 that means it always verify the timestamp uh, even if the uh, third expiry is not there. Uh, so if we set to two, then uh, it's option one. So we only uh, verify timestamp on third expiry. Uh, so um, the rest is to document it. Then the then the name should be verify timestamp only on third expiry. Uh, I think it's yeah. okay. It's a it's a yeah. on third expiry. Uh, uh, you can add uh, only to it, but it will just make it longer. <laughs> uh, well, what do you think, Patrick? Uh, yeah, both works. I think it's uh, so the verify timestamp on sort expiry when that is set to false. What is the behavior? Always verify. I don't think that comes through, right? When you say that is false. Uh, I mean, it's default. If someone wants to use that, they will read the documentation of it. I mean, we can add the word only, but it just honestly makes the stream longer. Okay, I will. Uh, that... I'll... Okay, so. I uh, okay. Sorry, so go on. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> thanks. Uh, okay. So, uh, because uh, uh, mainly find some uh, ambiguity, then uh, I'm more tending to uh, Patrick's idea. So we should add uh, only to it. Always make it longer, but it reduces the ambiguity. I think this is what I would suggest, but this goes away from a Boolean flag. We yeah. put it in the chat. Yeah, actually, yeah. Meaning's proposal is another uh, way, um, although it is not Boolean, but uh, from the, yeah. But but it's more clear. Um, verify timestamp, yeah. Always verify or on search expiry. I think I didn't in... understand your command, Feynman. Yeah, to me as a user, I think having the type of booting values seems to be more e to be easier to memory you know i don't need to check an another table to see whether which values i can put into this parameter i feel these policies are not written as frequently as someone writing code or other configuration configuration as code Right. Um, I'm trying to err towards being as verbose as possible. For example, when a when a security reviewer or anybody else reads the policy, 
you are able to convey the intent as clearly as possible. Uh, again, we can do it with the only. Uh, it becomes a bit more verbose. So this is this is smaller, but you you don't have the boolean. You have actual values to put in there. Uh, so yes, so the meaning's proposal is more uh, robust and uh, easy to understand. Uh, but the problem here is that in your case, is the verify timestamp field a uh, required field or optional? It's optional with the default as always. So if it's not specified or it's or it is empty, it means always. Is that right? Uh, I think empty would be invalid. If it is not specified, it is always. Oh, I see. Uh, Patrick, do you have any comments on it? Uh, no, I don't have strong opinion on this. I, I think both of them work. And I've just updated it in the chat window so everyone can see how it will looks like. Yeah, maybe <laughs> maybe a Boolean flag maybe a Boolean flag is easier to remember for users. I mean, I'd see the advantage of both the options, but I'm bad with naming. I mean, allowing not to have Boolean flag allows you to extend that values in future if you need to. With Boolean, you are stick to the two values and you will have to introduce a new flag. But yes, it's values are difficult to remember. Um, yeah, I think for the Boolean, Flag. The problem is that if it is false, it can mean not verify or always verify, right? Yeah, that that is that is the reason I was going away from yeah. the, the the false is ambiguous. Yeah. Okay, now it is a naming preference. <laughs> People can take votes <laughs> and decide. I think yeah. I think we, we uh, have bottomed out on all options. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, then, I can, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah I think name is okay. Uh we, we can just uh, vote for it quickly. <laughs> yeah. I have one more thing. Do we want to add a new configuration key there or just want to put it as a top level attribute in signature verification? Uh, what do you mean there? I mean, the thing with this is usually customer will, or users will want to have this field at policy level, not like whole document level, not at individual policy level, usually. Uh, I would because... say I wouldn't do that. I, I understand you might repeat but yeah. that is not something that we are supporting with the verification anyway. It is it is scoped at each set of images, right? True. Mm, true. Well, it says that if you don't want this behavior probably you don't want for whole system this we can always support this later if we need to that is right uh, 
Uh, yeah, based on the chat, it uh, seems uh, uh, the last uh, message from Minning uh, got some votes. And uh, um, I just want to confirm. So if this parameter verify timestamp user uh, does not specify it, it means always, right? Yeah, if you don't specify this key, it means the default value is always. Okay. If this is uh, a default value in the trust policy, why, why there's a case that users don't specify it? That's it means users intentionally remove the key, verify timestamp from the trust policy. No, no, what we are saying is, I think the 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 proper way of using this would or the way you would normally use this is the signature verification with some level, and then you say verify timestamp after cert expiry, right? The default value is always. So if you only mention signature verification strict, then, then verify timestamp, the behavior is always, that, that is the default. So normally people would only use it as the second last message in there is the way to override, configure it in an override fashion. Uh, sounds good. Uh, Patrick, uh, uh, I heard you have some uh, opinions. Uh, you can unmute yeah, your um... now. So so uh so this field is under signature verification field. Uh, uh I'm thinking about the trust policy version. Uh, uh it's backward compatible, right? Uh if we don't have verified timestamp, then it's option two. Okay, so so we don't need to upgrade the trust policy version to 1.1 .1 or 2.0. So we, we can stay 1.0 for trust policy version. And uh, and by the way, uh, the same field will apply to uh, to the blob trust policy. That's correct, right? Because we have two trust policies now. Yep, simply apply to blob for timestamp since the feature is same across both the policies and both the, the type of artifact. Yeah, those are good points regarding the versioning. Um, does this, I'm, I'm thinking through that, Does is, is there a potential for any surprise here? I think what we are implying is somebody using updated notation to the latest version. They have existing policy. And if they consume a timestamped signature, the trust policy now expects a, a TSA trust or configuration. Is that right, Ritesh? Uh, yes, we need to talk about that. We should... Okay, we need. We still need to talk about that. Okay. There would be a new trust or type and we need to define its behavior. So basically, um, there's at least one action to be taken by end users to start using timestamped signatures. Yes, right now. Actually, I don't know what's the behavior right now. Do in code, do we feel it? I'm not sure, but yes. We need to talk about how to capture the customer intent here, whether they want to verify timestamp or not. So there, right now, we are proposing that TSA should be a new trust store field. But uh, in the spec, trust store uh, type TSA is is already there in the in the uh, 1.0.0 release. I mean the notary project spec. However, yeah. in the notation go implementation, uh, we, uh, I believe we don't have that uh, trust store type implemented implemented. So in 1.2.0, I mean for notation go and notation CLI, 
uh, we need to bring in the TSA trust store type as a new type. So for backward compatible, if user upgrade from 1.1.0 1 .1, uh, to 1.2.0, um, they will need to add this trust store type into their trust policy to enable timestamping verification. So I think that's backward compatible. Yeah, but there's one more aspect there. Since the, since timestamp signature is optional, how do you want to capture customer intent of verifying timestamp signature or not? Which we haven't done in our trust policy till now. So there are like four, two situations where the customer specified trust type, TSA trust store type or not, depending upon that, whether we should verify timestamp signature or not. Because for example, if I say specify a TSA and if timestamp signature is not present, what should we do? Uh, so basically this becomes, let me put that table out here, I'm just trying to write that. But these are the four conditions possible in our trust policy and signature. Okay, let me reformat that for a comment. Just to uh, confirm that we are talking about uh, how user uh, enable timestamping, right? Yes, we, we, we have finalized that user will enable time saying by adding a TSA trust to type in trust policy. But what should be the behavior of notation when TSA store is added? So like when TSA store is present and signature contains timestamp, when TSA store is present but signature doesn't contain timestamp. Because when because when a user is specifying a TSA trust store in a policy, they might be expecting a timestamp signature, but what happens if it's not present in the signature? I don't think that the second case is, is kind of implied that if I, if I specify a TSA, I expect the signatures to be always timestamped. We can discuss more about it, but I I think it's 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 more of like the, the basically the signature is signed and countersigned by X and Y, and I'm specifying which ones I I trust. Yeah, yes, but if I am expecting a timestamp signature, then I want it that signature doesn't fail suddenly after my certificate expires. It should be at least valid for a long time. So that was the intent. This might be customer user intent when they specify a trust of type TSA. I think the scenario that I am concerned about, sorry, this this might go in a slight tangent, is a publisher is not timestamping today mm -hmm. and I'm setting the verification policy as just the publisher, right? CA publisher. And then they start timestamping. My, my policy still has just the CA. What happens in that case? Did we talk about that? Yes, so like we don't verify timestamp because if it only has a CA, we don't care about timestamp because we don't trust any timestamp, right? Okay, so if there isn't a TSA, if my trust store doesn't contain a TSA configuration in the policy, then I'm then I'm ignoring the timestamp signatures. Yes. But at the point when the when the signing certificate expires, it's gonna invalidate that signature. Yes. Okay. But I'm worried about the second one. The first one, it's okay. I'm worried about the second. Be what should be behavior for second one? When trust policy contains a TSA but signature doesn't contain a timestamp, should we fail there? Because. Uh 
I think that also depends on the the verify timestamp value, right? If it says always, I don't think it implies the other way. The, the policy implies all of the things in the policy regarding TSA come into picture when there when there is a TSA signature. But it's not the reverse that if I have configuration about the TSA that I'm expecting signatures all the time with the TSA. Uh, that would be my opinion, but we, we can run that by, we can do so have some internal reviews around it. Okay. Because in my opinion, it's like if customers are specifying a TSA, they want it to be there, but yes. Because there would be a surprise that, oh, I thought the TSA, I have specified a TSA in trust policy, but signature expired after signing certificate expiry, which doesn't meet the use case. I but think yes, if that's the case, then we can add a new field, uh, not field, new value, something like forced to force verify the timestamp, even if the timestamp is not there. I don't, um, again, this, this is my, <laughs> I'm just giving my top of the my mind reaction here. From a from an end user's perspective, these are like very specific. Like even from a security engineer's perspective, I don't think forcing forcing a publisher to have timestamp signature always. It becomes relevant when the signing certificate expires, but saying I always expect them to provide it, maybe maybe too much. I, that, that's why I want to get some additional feedback internally about this. Just to summarize, like for second, we have to be said for every other option. Are we good? Give me a couple of minutes reading through. Uh, Pratesh, could you put uh, this uh, into maybe comment in the PR or uh, in your vote. Uh, like I think this is a good good summary. Uh, and uh, the second case, we need to define the behavior. And uh, what we um, discussed for the new verify timestamp parameter uh, at least for now, uh, if it is uh, case one, uh, then based on the value, we can have always verify or verify after certain expiry, right? And, and for the second one, we need to define the behavior and then also considering um, if users specify uh, after certain expiry, well, what does it mean? Yep, and also we have to make sure it works with the new field which we are introducing. Verify times after expiry always or post. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that is right. I, I read through the options that, that summary sounds correct. You are right that all of these scenarios need to be run against the verification level and the switch, new switch that we are introducing and make sure like there is no weird cases there. Okay, we, we are running out of time. I think uh, uh, basically we aligned the default behavior option two, right? And we aligned the uh, at least for now, uh, we would like to introduce a new parameter verify timestamp with uh, value after third expiry and always. And we have uh, four scenarios as Pradesh list in the chat. And the second scenario, we need to um, have a follow-up discussion on it and also come back whether 
we should have uh, another value for verify timestamp this new permit. I think this is the summary. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, hopefully we can uh, in this week uh, get clarity on the uh, second one. Yeah, I would like uh, on the issue, at least everybody to give their opinion about that. We can yeah. continue discussion there. Yeah, Pritesh, do we have a, a issue for this? Uh, maybe you yeah, we can... Want, we wanted to use the same issue or we wanted to create a new one. I think let's reuse the same one because we are still discussing the behavior of timestamp. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, How about this? Uh, in the vote issue, uh, you can summary option two, the defaults as we aligned, and also this new parameter we also aligned. Then you can add these four scenarios and the what uh, and also our action on the second one, so that we mm -hmm. can discuss uh, offline. This will be more efficient. We we don't have to wait another week to have an online discussion. We'll do that. Thank you. Uh, and we also have one more topic I would like to discuss with Vani uh, later about this uh, patch release. Um, because um, our uh, origin goal, uh, 1.2, uh, it seems not uh, happening uh, before end of May. So I propose to have a patch release because comparing to previous release is already uh, three months and we have some dependencies and the bug fixings. And I think it will be good that we can have a patch release. Um, if, if we all agree, I can follow up with one later on uh, how to uh, make it happen. I think there's only one thing that we may need to consider. It's about the OCI spec one to one support because that pull request has been merged into main branch last month. Yeah, that, that is in the 1.2 release, unless later we, we decide that we, we needed to cut earlier for 1.2 and only include uh, OCI 1.1 uh, supports. Um, but we can discuss that later. The patch release only considering the dependency update, bug fixing, and also um, if we can manage to merge this um, error message improvements. Um, Okay, um, Wani, Pradesh, maybe we can follow up it uh, uh, offline on the patch release. Yeah. Yep. Okay, thanks. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.